Hey everyone, my name is Mike Vaughn. I'm a writer at Geek Vibes Nation, and I'm also the author of The Ultimate Guide to Strange Cinema. And I'm Dylan Gonzalez. I'm the editorial director for GeekVibesNation.com and also a co-host of the Home Dance Film Festival podcast. And welcome to a new Video Attic new release roundup. Uh, if you're new here, first of all, welcome. Uh, what we do here is we go back and forth and we talk about the latest home video releases. And I know I say this every week, but like we have a wild trip to take y'all mm -hmm. on. Um, but I'm going to kick it off to you first. I appreciate that. Yes, I have a brand new one that I, I'll admit, I was kind of uh, hesitant about this because it has such a gener generic title, <laughs> but it is a new 4K release of Plane from Lionsgate, uh, old uh, Gerard Butler and mm. Mike Coulter, who Marvel fans will probably know from Jessica Jones. My mom, who watches this, will probably remember him from The Good Wife. So that's a shout out to her. <laughs> uh, but uh, he, or this movie, it doesn't have any right to be as good as it is. It's like surprisingly good for like a modern action movie. It. It does everything that you kind of want for it to do. Um, it just, it takes its time. It kind of builds in some like character development uh, before it kind of gets into like all the craziness, but it, it paces itself really well. There's kind of like two halves to this movie. And this isn't really a spoiler because it's, it's in the trailer and you kind of like the premise it's built in. But like in the beginning, it's just like a Gerard Butler he plays a pilot of an airplane. I think they are uh, departing from Taiwan, if I remember correctly. Um, and like kind of against his better judgment, uh, he he is going into like this storm that he's like, I don't think we should take this path. But like the powers of be are just kind of like, no, you, it, it'll be fine. You just go for it. And at the same time, he has like about 15 passengers on board. And he's also transporting one prisoner who is being extradited. So there, uh, that's played by my, he's played by Mike Coulter. Um, and in the midst of this, of course, the storm whoops their ass and they mm -hmm. start to kind of like go out of control and like barely make it down safely. And what survivors are left um, have to kind of, they happen to have landed in this kind of like lawless island of like kind of rebels. Um, and they kind of had to like then uh, survive kind of all these rebels until they can get rescued. So it's kind of like two halves. The first half is kind of like a plane crash disaster ish movie. And the second half is like kind of like an island, almost Rambo ish, like survival tale. Hmm. But it's not like what I really like about this is Gerard Butler, he's played like a lot of like action heroes and like larger than life heroes. Here is like one of his more like grounded performances because he, he has really, um, uh, he, He's not a superhero. He's just a normal guy. Um, he he can hold his own, but he's like he's not the best at fighting. He like can like shoot pretty well and everything, but like he's not just like super heroic. He gets hurt. He is like he's not a superhero. That's basically what it is. But he also takes a, takes on some of like trauma while he is like on this journey like he's like lost people in the crash he has to kill some people to survive while on the ground and you kind of see him wrestling with this throughout the movie whereas mm -hmm. like like the Mike Coulter character is a prisoner who like may or may have not done what he is accused of doing that's like a whole other layer to it too he is kind of like taking charge and kind of like leading the both of them to, like on this like kind of pseudo mission to like keep everyone alive and safe and get rescued and stuff so it's a really interesting dynamic it's kind of not quite like a buddy cop movie but there's like a they're an interesting pairing trying to help each other for their own gains and for the like the gains of the larger like survivors it's a really good action movie it's like good action good thrills it leaves you like like suspenseful the characters are not too dumb which is really great uh for an action movie that's like pretty much pretty well thought out the villains are kind of two-dimensional. That's kind of like the only one criticism. But even that, they are kind of given some amount of like gravitas, which is good for this type of movie. But overall, surprisingly solid action movie. Mm -hmm. I, for a movie that came out in early January that like has a generic title like Plane, it is way better than you would expect it to be. If you 
if you're expecting like an Oscar worthy performance, you're not going to get that here. But if you're looking for just a solid action movie, this delivers like both on the disaster front and like shoot them up, like killing, like knifing people, all that stuff. It, it works really well. And this 4K release from Lionsgate is really solid. It has a, it, it has a Dolby Vision transfer. So it has really deep, rich colors. Um, it has like dark blacks and like uh, it, the highlights are like well maintained. They aren't like blown out or anything. Um, it, it has a, the color palette is kind of like a little bit, a um, little bit desaturated at times. It has kind of like a yellowish quality, but it's still some of kind of like the jungle-ish uh, scenery really does pop like the greens and stuff. It has a Dolby Atmos audio track, which works really well, especially whenever the chaos of the plane and the storm and everything the all the sounds are all around you and it's like a very immersive experience special feature wise it's not loaded but it has like a decent amount um it has three main featurettes that run about seven to 20 minutes long so there's it's decent enough for this type of release no audio commentary but um other than that there's just a trailer but overall it's a really solid release if you're looking for a good action movie plain surprised me um and it is one of gerard butler's like better performances i've seen from him uh it's it's a really surprisingly good movie so there yeah. you go <laughs> when you uh when i saw this on the spreadsheet i was very curious because it did seem kind of generic and i i will admit i'm not the biggest gerard butler fan i'm very you piqued my curiosity i will probably try to check that out nice. um so uh, my first title is a 4K title, but it's very different. Uh, so I don't even know how to like segue mm -hmm. uh, into this. So we're just going to raw dog it here <laughs> with, with Raw Head Rex. Yes. <laughs> which can we just so here? A um, lot of great features. Um, slip slip cover. Um, inside. Um, yeah, I. I just think we live in such an amazing time where we could have something like Rawhead Rex on beautiful 4K. Uh, this is one of my favorite movies. Uh, I love it. <laughs> it's like, do you ever want to see a giant goofy monster cladded in leather piss on a priest? <laughs> Right? <laughs> Who hasn't? But um, Rawhead Rex delivers that and mm -hmm. more. Um, so yeah, uh, critics were really not nice to this movie, but and I think like Clive Barker even pretty infamously was so upset with his adaptation that he wanted to direct uh, his follow-up adaptation himself, which was a little movie known as Hellraiser. So we kind of have this to thank for the Hellraiser that we got. But I think he's being way too harsh because I think this is a fun movie. Um, it's kind of all over the place. Uh, it's a folk horror. Um, it's a pseudo slasher monster movie. Um, again, you have like this leather S&M sort of um, layer to it, which I think is kind of fascinating but uh yeah it's just engaging weird wild i love it i've seen this like more times than i probably care to admit <laughs> um yeah like i know on saint patrick's day a lot of people will watch the leprechaun movies this is kind of my go-to um but yeah um so the transfer is really great. I was really impressed. Um, even more so with the fact that like the elements for this uh, 4K must have been really great because uh, I've never seen this look better. And uh, I've had the previous Blu-ray release of this. Uh, it was on sale and I had to, to have it um, like the Steelbook version. But um, yeah, I was going to say like this kind of uh is is a really nice upgrade to that so if you are curious about whether or not this is worth an upgrade i mean for the 4k alone it's phenomenal um like they utilize a lot of landscapes 
um in uh i believe it was uh filmed in ireland and it's amazing just how like lush and vibrant and amazing like uh everything looks like this movie has a dreamy kind of surreal quality and i know that's kind of used uh, a lot but this movie does kind of have a weird fairy tale like aesthetic mm -hmm. with uh how it's shot how the lo locations are used and this 4k restoration really i think brings that um like home nicely like there's definitely like some moody uh atmospheric like camera work then you can really kind of appreciate what the director was trying to go for um conversely the big goofy looking monster uh looks even more obviously a costume in this 4k but i mean that's part of the charm for i mean in my opinion so uh yeah this is like spectacular looking um i have no complaints i just i think that like i love kino anyways but like for this they're in my heart forever it's amazing <laughs> so uh we always talk about like you know these have this has this really nice slip cover and mm -hmm. if you want that you probably want to like order it like um soon yeah like if you only had like the blu-ray this is very much worth um upgrading because i believe even the blu-ray is probably like upgraded so yeah uh, i believe that there's no new features with this this is uh everything ported over um from the previous release but uh it's great features uh if y'all like uh folk horror like please give this a chance throw this in the mix um Severin did a really amazing folk horror box set. So if you want something to like supplement that with this. Yeah, I've never seen that one. Um, I I hadn't actually heard about it until the like past couple of years. And then I saw that they were releasing this and I saw some mixed response whenever I posted the <laughs> news article. Some people kind of do agree that it's a little bit uh, overly cheesy, but now you're giving me this intensely positive. So like, I'll have to check it out for myself to see how it goes. But yeah. uh i i'm behind on my clive barker watching so this will be an interesting one to like uh kind of start me anew so i'm i'll let yeah. you know what i think about it when i check it out yeah it's interesting because when i first watched this uh i also didn't like it but it's one of those that just kind of grew on me and i find it endlessly fascinating again because there's these weird sort of s m things and when you think about like how this is a little bit of a precursor to hellraiser i feel like it's even more interesting awesome yeah that sounds like a good release especially if you're a fan of the movie so uh good job for kino um moving on to my next uh film this is uh from strand releasing it is a new 4k restoration blu-ray of suzhou river uh which is a a movie from uh shanghai i believe that's where the at least the, the river is. Uh, so you have this art uh, artwork in here. Um, so this came out in the early 2000s um, and uh, it's from Lu Yi. Um, and I had never seen this movie before. I just saw that Strange was putting this out and I wanted to check it out. And it's a really solid movie. It's I saw some chatter about uh, like people kind of comparing it to Vertigo, uh, which... Uh, I can kind of understand why it does really play with um, time in weird ways. Like you're kind of, once you reach the end of the movie, you kind of see kind of the like layers and what the film is actually doing. It's kind of framed in interesting ways, which kind of uh, come better into focus. Like after you've watched it, you probably want to watch it a second time. Um, but like the main focus is like a, a guy who is like kind of, uh, he's like kind of filming everything you kind of see stuff from like the camera's point of view and you uh, like learn about this like girl who he like kind of fell in love with and um, there's also like a, a second gentleman in the picture too um, so it's like a, it's a love story where like the the love eventually fades away and then like at one point this woman is thought to be dead and then uh, a little bit like after her her death um uh the gentleman who was like dating her comes across uh um a woman who looks exactly like her at like this um 
not a strip club, but it's like a gentleman's club where she's playing like a uh, dressed up mermaid and stuff. So um, it's kind of like a twisty mystery of just like, who is this woman? Is she the woman that supposedly died? Uh, what is her relationship to this guy who knew the other girl and how their relationship changes? So it's kind of like a twisty like type of narrative, which I, I found really in, like uh, engaging. Um, it has like a really nice pacing. It's not overly long, it's only 85 minutes. Um, it has uh, a real realistic touch to the filmmaking where a lot of movies you get from China, especially from like, like the old 90s or early 2000s are very kind of like, kind of put China in more of a like uh, idealistic spotlight. It's kind of like a kind of clean and just kind of like, it's not really showing you kind of like the more seedy kind of broken down elements. But Li Yu, he kind of shows that kind of grittiness and like kind of like people homeless and like trash on like the side of the road, like that type of like gritty aesthetic, which kind of like feeds in a little bit to the narrative and kind of like almost noirish quality of this story. I really did find it very engaging and the acting was really good. The, the, like the cinematography and like kind of the whole sh like construction of the movie is really good. I, I think this is a really worthwhile movie. And like, if you do kind of like those kind of Hitchcockian elements, I think you'll appreciate that about this. Um, this from Strain Releasing, I don't believe it's been released on Blu-ray in the US before, but this comes from a new uh, 4K restoration. Um, it was shot on 16 millimeters. So this is a 4K restoration of the uh, 16 millimeter AB negative. Um, and it looks really nice. There, there's a little bit, there's some limitations to like a 16 millimeter. So it's kind of like, it's not like as crisp and stuff as like 35 millimeter, obviously. And like some of the kind of like, uh, like blacks and stuff are not like crazy deep, but nothing is like kind of like crushing or anything. It's a really nice 16 millimeter transfer. Um, I didn't see like a lot of like nicks and scratches. This has been like had a lot of care put into the restoration, which I appreciated. Um, the soundtrack has also been restored. Um, it comes with the DTS 5.1 uh, surround track. Um, there's not really any special features. There's like some trailers and stuff, but uh, no nothing really. I wish I would have loved to heard a commentary to like learn a little bit more about the filmmaker and kind of like uh, how this fits into their filmography and kind of like deconstructing the narrative a little bit but as a release i think the movie is worth it um i'm excited that strand has like put this kind of care into putting this restoration on disc um so i'm looking forward to checking out more from them and uh so suja river if you're a fan of like uh, asian cinema definitely check it out um even if you're like uh not like the biggest in the subtitles if you're a little just a little bit more adventurous i highly recommend so yeah nice. it's a good it's a good release yeah that sounds really interesting that that has uh not been on my radar but it sounds like um really interesting especially when you say it's sort of like vertigo-esque mm -hmm. so um so my next title well like the next three titles i'm going to be into warner archive and um i'm kicking this off with confessions of a nazi spy nice and here's the back so yeah this is a movie that's really interesting um i feel like the context behind it's maybe even more interesting than the movie itself mm -hmm. um so uh this came out in uh believe 39 we uh as americans did not enter the second world war yet uh we were still kind of like waffling on if we wanted to get into this conflict um that's a whole other diatribe but anyways um so this is a spy thriller that uh kind of um anticipates um america on the verge of of uh entering this conflict um so this movie is as patriotic uh as you can get i mean this movie is wrapped in an american flag uh and its patriotism is uh very much on its red white and blue sleeves um like it, it goes full like all right we're americans we gotta stomp out fascism which is great 
but this movie is it's just it's so patriotic that it's almost kind of cheesy um so yeah um but it's an interesting movie and um i think it might be really one of the early movies that kind of uh introduced people uh to the real looming threat of fascism um that was sweeping europe so again i think that's really fascinating how you know probably for many audiences this was like their kind of introduction to this um crazy guy named hitler and all this bad stuff going on so um edward g robinson's really good um i've never really have a problem like with his acting um some of it's a little hammy but i think he really understands like the um importance of this role and he brings a lot of like gravitas towards it um it's a really interesting thriller um it's um really nicely paced too it doesn't like uh have any like uh filler it's just very like straight to the point um i like how everything just kind of connects really neatly um there's like some some uh plot points where you're like i wonder where this is going or how this is going to tie into everything and and you know it's a credit to really good storytelling that everything comes together nicely and there's no like i said filler or fat on this um so yeah it's almost like hitchcockian in a way um I definitely think that there's sort of elements that feels like Hitchcock could have directed this. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly um, I believe this was before Hitchcock came to America, but certainly people would have been familiar with his uh, work in Britain. So, uh, you know, it kind of has that sort of Hitchcockian kind of flair to it too. So yeah, it's a great movie. Uh, it looks fantastic. Warner Archives never disappoints with their restorations. Um, again, especially when you have a movie from like the late 30s, um, no artifacts, no uh, scratches. Everything looks very clean. Um, the contrast between the black and white's really nice. Um, you know, so yeah, no issues there. Sounds great as well. And yeah, it's a it's a really fascinating movie. Um, I was maybe like a little bit lukewarm on this because I'm not really into this this like subject matter. But yeah, I think that it's pretty fascinating, especially uh, again as you look at the time period that this this was uh, produced. Yeah, I haven't had the opportunity to check this one out yet, but I am really interested, especially like knowing kind of the backstory. I did check, and it is 1939. You were correct mm -hmm. on that um but i love edward g robinson so i'm very excited to check this out i was just checking uh my correspondence with my warner archive contact mm. and this is from a 4k scan of the original nitrate negative uh mm. so uh i'm glad that they had the original elements to work from and from what it sounds like they do their typically great work so i'm very excited to check with this one out especially as a, a huge edward g robinson fan yeah, uh, it's funny in our household, we like, you know, do the meh. Like he does that <laughs> yeah. kind of like, uh, I guess that's kind of like his shtick from, I don't know, his gangster movies, but like, yeah, yeah. a little uh, like um, Chief Wiggum. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited for you to continue your one archive journey after this. But first, uh, I'm going to continue kind of along the same vein, a little bit uh, different, but still in the, kind of the film noirish vein. Last week, you made a passing reference to classic flicks with their Little Rascals release, and I hadn't talked about them in a while, but they're coming back with a vengeance this week. <laughs> I have two from them, and the first one I have um, is their latest 4K release of The Long Wait. Um, this one happens to be another uh, Mickey Spillane uh, adaptation, which I I'd previously talked about their 4K release of I, the Jury. Um, so you have this here. Let me kind of pop these discs out so you can see that full artwork. Um, and so here you go. Got this here. Um, and yes, that is Anthony Quinn here. Um, young Anthony Quinn. Let me pop these back in so I don't screw these up. So, so yeah, this is Anthony Quinn and uh, Charles Coburn, Gene Evans, and Peggy Castile. Uh, so yeah, 
this one, it's a pretty solid film noir. Um, it, so it starts with Anthony Quinn's character at the beginning, um, kind of like hitching a ride out of town uh, and getting into a like uh, getting into a car that pretty much almost comically immediately gets into a car crash. <laughs> um, and kind of, it's like a really bad car crash where like the car kind of explodes. He gets out alive, but like he is left like uh, concussed and like of course has amnesia. So. He ends up in like a different town, not knowing uh, who he is. And for like, uh, it jumps kind of in time a couple of years and he still doesn't know who he is until one day he's um, he's like at a bar, a guy who it's kind of antagonizing him, but also it's like kind of like a, a little, kind of weird dynamic. He's like, oh, I saw a picture of you. Like you actually, I, you come from this town and if you go there like you'll probably figure out who you are like i saw it in a window and stuff what he fails to tell tell him is that it was on a wanted poster so like uh anthony quinn's character he excitedly goes to this town where he is a wanted man and he, he is believed to have like uh killed a district attorney i believe and robbed a bank uh but when he gets there he's like kind of oblivious to like what everyone else thinks he did and he's just kind of like trying to figure out who he is and like uh, meets different people he's not like immediately arrested or anything because he's only like suspected of stuff but you kind of do see this kind of uh his journey of like trying to figure out who he is um what his life was then if he did commit this crime he's unsure of it himself um and also a weird uh plot point which is fairly engaging of like he had a girl that uh, supposedly was his inside person in the bank um but at, since that time she has had facial reconstruction so he is meeting all these women who are potentially this woman that he used to have a relationship with so there's like about three or four women that could potentially be this woman he used to have a thing with and so it's like him trying to figure out who this woman like who the actual woman is what his past is and like also kind of solve the larger crime of what actually happened it's a pretty engaging film noir um, it has some decent twists and turns. It's not like crazy, like Shyamalan twists, but like it has some good twists and turns. Um, and it just unfolds really well. It's probably one of my favorite Anthony Quinn performances. I've never been like a diehard fan of his, but I've appreciated him and what he's done. But this is one of his more compelling performances for me, at least. Um, and just as a like a drama it works really well it's only 94 minutes so it doesn't really overstay its welcome um and this release is pretty solid one thing i have to say is like for people who are used to like 4k releases usually they come with a uh, high dynamic range hdr um s similar to eye of the jury this is still standard dynamic range there's no like hdr in implemented it's just a 4k resolution without the like the uh the dynamic color palette like well it's a black and white movie but the dynamic range in hues but it, I, I that doesn't really like greatly impact the movie it's still like a really or like the transfer at least um it's still a really good 4k transfer like the resolution solid and yeah i think it helps like still clean up any like uh lingering like encode issues um uh, but it's just a really crisp nice picture there's not too much in the way of nicks and scratches is a really nice 4k restoration um just be aware that it does not have hdr if that matters to you but still doesn't make the release any worse um this doesn't really have much in the way of special features it has an audio commentary which is appreciated i i do appreciate that they uh, went into that um and they have but other than that it's just an image image gallery and some trailers um, yeah, it does have restored audio as well, so it sounds good. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, it, solid release. It's if you like film noir, if you like Anthony Quinn, it's recommended. Um, and yeah, so classic flicks, they did a good job with this. So yeah, it's a, as far as like undiscovered noirs from, from my perspective, I had not heard of it. Uh, it's a good discovery. I enjoyed it. Nice. Um, yeah, I I do really like uh, Anthony Quinn. I I talked about um, uh, Requiem for a heavyweight, a heavyweight, which I thought was uh, really good. Um, so yeah, I I definitely am a big fan of his. So I'll have to check that out. So um, sticking with the Warner Archive train here, which is Camille, 
um, which is a remake uh, of a silent film. And that is included uh, as well, which is really nice. Oh, cool. You get two movies on here. And uh, yeah, so I will say this is very controversial. I'm not the biggest Greta Garbo fan. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not. Yeah. I just, I I don't know. I, I'll i save my diatribe, uh, but I just feel like she's kind of overrated. Mm. Um, I don't that, think I've seen enough to make a a, a, a grand statement either way, honestly. Yeah, um, yeah I, I more think about her whenever I think about Death Becomes Her. They have like a really cute reference to mm. Greta Garbo and her uh, accent. But anyways, uh, so this is a, is a big budget remake of a silent film that I believe had Rudolph Valentino. That's who oh, I was yeah. trying to think of. And uh, yeah, I will say, even though, again, I'm not the biggest Garbo fan, I really like this movie. Um, I'm a big fan of G- George uh, Kukar. And I think that uh, he was definitely somebody that like understood how to like handle big personalities and big stars and really actually utilize that to uh, their full potential. And I think that he does this here as well. Like he really does a nice job of taking Garbo's natural aloofness and making it really shine with the character. And I appreciate that. Um, I think a lot of directors maybe wouldn't know kind of how to make her character work, but yeah, he's Mm -hmm. uh, a legend for a reason. Um, If you don't know who that is, if you look him up, he's done so many iconic films. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, I really liked um, the technical aspects of this movie. Amazing costumes, set design. Um, You know, I love how everything is just so over the top and melodramatic and just sweeping and like uh, everybody's, you know, at an 11 and I love it. Um, There's a really wonderful, boisterous character uh who is like my favorite uh i want to be reincarnated as her she's just like big larger than life character it's funny because i i showed this with i watched this with my husband and he's like you know i hate to say it but i think garbo's character is the least interesting mm. uh out of the bunch but yeah it's it's good um i liked it uh it's not very long it's maybe like an hour 40 minutes and uh yeah it's got a real like a lot of great character actors robert taylor's good um i think maybe they i think he comes off a little generic in here but um yeah otherwise it's yeah good lionel barrymore also uh i want to mention because he's uh amazing as always so yeah um looks great um do you know if this is a, a new 4k as well uh, I was just actually looking at that. So this has a little bit more complicated explanation than just saying. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of like explain kind of the history of this. Apparently, uh, you're not the only person that liked this movie because apparently this was a really popular movie. So because mm-hmm. of that and it being released so much, the original source elements were not in the best shape and like kind of just because they were like farmed out so much. Um, so this is actually from a 4K scan of the 1936 nitrate dupe duplicate negative and there are a few replacement shots uh from a fourth generation fine grain master positive so there there are a few segments of the like the original dupe or the the dupe negative that weren't in the best shape that they had to like kind of replace it with a, another shot another shot uh but from my experience like uh, i know like they had some issues with uh uh abraham abraham lincoln in illinois like their their replacement shots are usually like so like uh, like finely handled they usually can't make that much of a difference it still looks pretty much almost flawless you can kind of probably attest to that better than i but like apparently this was more like he says specifically this was a significant challenge so the fact Mm -hmm. that we got this at all like i'm glad that like they put so much effort into that that's pretty cool yeah no that's great um uh, I know that Warner Archive goes above and beyond with their restorations. Like I've actually interviewed people that worked on some of their horror, like classic horror titles. And mm-hmm. yeah, like like some of the lengths they go to make everything look beautiful and complete is mind boggling to me. So mm-hmm. the, no, that's awesome. I, I 
Uh, I think film lovers will be very excited for this. Uh, it is a great movie. And again, you get the silent version as well. So you get, uh, I think, a little bit more bang for your buck, too. So That's awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited to check that one out. I, 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 I want to see how I feel about Garbo. I need to, like, bone up <laughs> on her, like, filmography so I can, like, either, like, offer a rebuttal or just be like, yes, you're right. She is over. No, she's so just we, i mean she's always like very sleepy and aloof mm-hmm. and it's just like but i mean it's 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 fascinating i'm more fascinated with the the legend of her like you know how much even in her lifetime she was like deified and mm-hmm. then her legend only grew after she passed away but i i just i don't know i just i think that there was better actresses like betty davis joan crawford mm-hmm. like those are my my ladies but anyways why not both i don't like, yeah I no um she's fine i mean yeah. I, I think with like costume dramas there's something very stylistic about her performance and i think in that in that uh lane it, it works all right yeah i i'll have to hit you back and let you know <laughs> what i think of it but i'm glad to hear that it sounds like a really solid release i mean i'm excited to also can just compare it with like the silent version and see mm-hmm. how that works out so that's Good on them. Um, so uh, hitting up my second classic flicks release of the week. Uh, this is a recent Blu-ray release of Obsessed. Uh, so another kind of mis- mystery, like drama. We've several times uh, this week, we've t- called stuff Hitchcockian. And <laughs> let's just keep that going on because it, it is kind of in that lane. He, this this master of suspense is like impacted cinema for so long like of course we have to like use him as a reference for everything but i think it's apt um and this one specifically uh i guess it's uh it deals with a an ailing woman who's like kind of been a little bit convalescent for the like uh, for a couple years um and then she is finally uh she finally dies and she uh, she was married to a a man and what we come to learn is uh she may have had some arsenic in her system whenever she died so then it becomes like a kind of an investigation where uh like there there was her husband there was her I believe either her like close friend or nurse I can't quite remember but they were kind of like having like their own affair as well so it's like either her husband his uh his mistress or like there's like just a few other people in the house who it could be so it's not so much of like like who killed this person which there is an element to like who poisoned this woman it's more so how these people react to the information and like the suspicions they cast on one another and how it kind of impacts their relationship especially like the the main couple like like the the man who was having the affair like him and his mistress like they also have like a distrust of one another when this information comes out so it kind of like impacts their own like l- like little love like love nest like it kind of like shatters the honeymoon period of just like did you do it did you like uh, you kind of like calling each other out so it kind of like deteriorates all of these different relationships just the, the mere act of having any kind of suspicion or doubt injected into like this dynamic. It's really interesting. Um, and just like, uh, yeah, of course you have like, just kind of like the ending where kind of the detective comes in and be like, this is what happened and stuff. And like kind of de- deduces everything, but that's not so much what, what compels me as much. It is really the character dynamics and how, how they, they react to one another. And it's, it's not terribly long. Um, it's 78 minutes. So it's an hour and 18 minutes. So it doesn't overstay its welcome. It gives you just enough time to kind of like get this scenario set up um, and kind of like plant the seed of doubt and just see where that goes. And it, it works really well. It's a really solid mystery. It's not like, like, a undisputed classic, but it's like perfectly solid if you're in for like this type of like, type of like cozy distrustful mystery um it's really Mm -hmm. interesting and they this blu-ray does a really good job this comes from a new 4k restoration uh uh, i believe it's from the negative um uh yeah but it is a 4k restoration 
there's not really anything in the way of special features or just trailers, but as far as just an audio visual presentation, it's really good. Classic Flicks, Classic Flicks has done a really good job with this and the movie is really solid as well. So um, I love Classic Flicks. They don't put out like 15 movies a month, like Kino, like on Blu-ray, but like whenever they do put something out, uh, usually like one, one or two every one or two months, um, it's worth paying attention to. So I'm glad they did this. Um, I did not know about this beforehand, but I'm glad to know it now. So Obsessed is a solid watch if you're if you're a fan of the genre. Nice. I definitely am. I know they occasionally run sale, so I guess maybe mm -hmm. next time they do, I'll, I'll have to uh, put that in the description. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, I love uh, a good cozy mystery. That is my love language, so I will definitely yes. have to check that out. Um so my third and fi final title for Warner Archive is Neptune's Daughter. And mm -hmm. can we just, first of all, I wanted to talk about how leery <laughs> yeah. uh, Red Skelton looks right there. Like, I'm getting creeped out. Yes. Uh -huh. I mean, I know it is Esther Williams, so I can understand. But still, yeah. come on, show some tact. <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh, that's like fully, he's on a list somewhere. But anyways, <laughs> yes. um. So we do have some nice, really nice features here. Um, but uh, yeah, so Esther Williams, she's known for uh, her swimming movies. Um, I know a while back I talked about Million Dollar Mermaid, which is maybe her most well-known uh, vehicle. But um, yeah, I kind of wasn't sure <laughs> about this movie. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. Um but I actually really did. I thought it was a very breezy musical comedy. Um, I think um, kind of like with the um, Confessions of a Nazi, uh, the, the, the period in which this was made is uh, really fascinating just to give you like a really quick, um, like um, a backstory. Um, this was uh, filmed during what they would like, what we call like the good neighbor policy, which is like um, the U S kind of reaching out to like the Latin uh, America countries um, to, you know, uh, kind of talk about tourism. And uh, I think, cause we wanted something from them probably. Um, but this was something that maybe like lasted a few years, but they actually, I, I and this isn't random because they do literally name, they talk about that like literally in this movie like the someone mentions the good neighbor policy uh so i thought that was really fascinating um because i did watch a video about karma miranda and how um she came about that and i'll link that in the description it's a really fascinating watch uh video essay but yeah um even though i'm not the biggest fan of like musical rom-coms i thought this was really charming and fun esther williams is always great i think she's um really amazing to watch um a very like interesting uh presence um red skeleton is uh very uh slapsticky very over the top that was his kind of shtick um maybe it's a little bit too broad uh comedy at times but i did enjoy it um and uh, yeah, there's just some really weird kind of stuff going on. There's definitely some cringe moments, but uh, yeah, I thought it was overall pretty fascinating. It's one of those like um, keeping with the theme of Hitchcockian, there is a mistaken identity, the wrong man kind of thing, which is going on, which um, I don't think was necessarily meant as a Hitchcock parody, but uh you know, since we were kind of talking about Hitchcocking things. Um, Keenan Wynn is also in this. Um, he's a fascinating actor. I know out of all the actors that like Lucille Bob liked and worked with, um, Keenan Wynn was was reportedly her absolute favorite. Um so yeah, uh fun movie. Again, really interesting time period that this was made. It's a, a snapshot at a very specific time with America and latin america so uh really fascinating so um yeah this looks great um this is the only film that i'm reviewing from them that's uh in uh not only color technicolor yes. uh and it looks really great uh do you have any intel on this one was it a 4k's 
Yes, I was just looking at that. It is a 4K <laughs> scan of the original Technicolor nitrate negative. Um, and uh, he made special point to point out that like, uh, so uh, the Technicolor is it's a three strip color process. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they like uh, had like some special technology where they like tried to do like perfect alignment on all three color strips for like the most vibrant colorful picture possible and like to make sure there's no like misalignment or anything so they put a lot of like care into this restoration as well and like it sounds like it paid off so yeah who does um, yeah it's gorgeous and that's really interesting about the three strip technicolor because i believe um that that wasn't used very often i don't know if it required a special um projector but I know this was something that they didn't use a whole lot. But when uh, when you're watching something that's restored in three uh, strip, it looks gorgeous. Like I believe um, To Catch a Thief was also three strip. And like that Blu-ray, uh, even just the Blu-ray, not, not 4K, but uh, it looks amazing. I mean, it looks almost like a modern film. Like it, it looks that good because of the extra kind of like care with the color and stuff so yeah this is uh equally great um again um there's a lot of like um use of like locales um beautiful costuming like all of that really pops in color so if you're a fan um and again i i didn't think i was gonna be but i lo thought it was a lot of fun um but yeah that that face will haunt me so yeah uh, that sounds great. I'm excited. I, I am a big Esther Williams fan. I've even reviewed a few Kino discs where she's not even swimming uh, in the past year. So <laughs> um, I'll, I'll have to try to uh, remember to link those in the descriptions as well as some of my previous Esther Williams reviews, yeah. but I love her. So I'm excited to check this out. Uh, but I'm leaving the past behind. I've talked about a enough older <laughs> movies for now. I'm jumping to the present. Um, this is actually a Shudder original, and this is scare package to rad chad's revenge <laughs> um, and to be perfectly honest um my i when i watched the first film um did not super care for it <laughs> um but i was willing to give this a shot i have i, I reviewed the first film for geek vibes nation i'll probably have to link that as well in the description uh but the first scare package it was fine but it was a little bit overly long and it was kind of it it boiled down to being a, like an anthology film with like little short, like video shorts from different directors. And with any anthology film, there was some hits, but there was quite a few misses for me personally. And it wouldn't have been so bad if it would have just been as long as it was. I think it was like nearing two hours. It was at least like an hour and 50 minutes or hour 47. It was right around there. Um, this thankfully is a little bit shorter and a little bit more consistent for me um i believe this is like an hour 39 or 38 so even like t if it's like 10 minutes that's still it can make a difference in pacing so um so yeah scare package 2 you i guess you don't technically need to like they kind of like um uh recap a little bit of what happened in the first one but it, it starts right after the first one and it does kind of play on a lot of like continuing what was established in the first movie. Um, but uh, so they start with like uh, at the funeral of one of the main characters that died, um, RIP Rad Chad. Uh, but so, but it kind of quickly turns into like a Saw 3-esque journey where like a, a, the group of like, mourners who happen to be there are like taking on like this they're putting into this journey where they have to go from like set piece to set piece where they are like faced with like challenges where of course like each time like one of them is being picked off uh so it, it is kind of like that saw three type scenario um but like each time they get to like a a new spot they there is like a new video played where that you get to see like a new short film that like someone directed and there's some really interesting concepts and like uh, shorts included throughout that I really, I just, I was responding to a lot of what was happening. Like one of the first sh uh, like new short films um, is a really clever send up of like the final girl trope or whatever. So like uh, it starts out with like, there's like, uh, 
the final girl house is right next to like the uh like the house of like debauchery where like all the cheerleaders are like having sex and partying and stuff and like the final girls are just like sitting pretty and like know that they're going to be safe and stuff but then like suddenly the killer who like will show up like once a week and they're like wrong house you need to go over to the other and the killer's like okay like suddenly he's not playing by the rules and suddenly the 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 final girls who have like kept themselves like pure and virginal they start getting picked off too and they're like blowing their mind they don't know how to act they've like done all the right stuff so it's a really clever commentary on like the final girl trope of like good pure girls are safe and like sluts are evil like that's not my words but like that's how it's portrayed and like i think it's like a really interesting like Di like a dissection of like horror tropes and like not sh slut shaming and all that good stuff and then there's also some like other really solid uh entries throughout that are like um just dealing with like like almost kind of like evil dead-esque like ridiculousness of just like uh like the sixth part of a movie where it's like once again this person is back from the dead like they come back every so it's like the sixth installment of like a person like a killer who comes back for revenge and all like the like he's actually your brother and so like that type of thing there's a, it's a, there are more hits than misses for me in this particular installment i do think it's a better version of the first movie and well i didn't completely hate the first movie it's just like it was too long and just like had some issues this kind of clears up some of the there's still a lot of dumb stuff that does not work in this but there's enough that works that i think it 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 pleased me and i think the wraparound story is, is stronger in this as well compared to the first movie um so overall <clears throat> uh i like this more than the first movie i think it is worth a watch um if you like the first movie i think this is even better so that's good um but give it a shot on shutter first like I, we advocate for shutter they're great um it's a great streaming service so this is on there i would try before you buy but if you do buy it's a good presentation it's a good uh, audio visual presentation and it does have a good number of special features this has an audio commentary a making of featurette some deleted scenes some blue for bloopers or some uh, like a guide to some of the references that they kind of sprinkle in from other horror movies so if you're like a horror movie fan fanatic you're going to notice a lot of like horror movie references throughout even one of like the like set pieces requires the characters to have a knowledge of horror movies to get out of their scenario so like it heavily relies on all that stuff so scare package 2 rad chad's revenge i do not need a third one they kind of like redeem mm -hmm. themselves a little bit uh but if they do a third one i guess i'll watch it because it left a better taste in my mouth but overall Fairly decent horror movie, <laughs> horror comedy. Nice. Um, yeah, I infamously like kind of hated the first one, uh, and hates a strong word, but yeah, I hated it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I will probably, yeah, like you said, it, it might be like a try before I buy kind of mm -hmm. situation. Um, so uh we're gonna get a little spicy here we're gonna put the kids to bed for a second here and we're gonna talk about um the final two films in the three between the sheets uh <laughs> collection mm -hmm. uh which was quite something it's quite the journey um yeah. that i was on but i'm gonna start with black venus um it is a historical costume drama uh, that centers around a woman named Venus, of course. Um, she gets mixed up with an artist. She's like kind of his muse. Uh, and this leads to some pretty bad stuff. Um, even some really icky stuff involving a teenager uh, who says she's 16, but probably in her 20s and for the actual movie. Okay. Um, so overall, um, like this is um something with both like all three of these films this the sex is not hardcore like it's very um like if you y'all remember like skinamax like it was all very like uh you probably see more explicitness just on cable now um mm -hmm. but uh yeah so yeah these are this is, is pretty much as soft core as you can get um just a lot of like breasts and ass but not a lot of like there's no like penetration i don't even uh i believe you don't even really see male nudity in any of these um which is a bummer so <laughs> uh for for some i mean yeah i mean if you like 
naked women these this is a set for you so equal um, opportunity <laughs> right um but yeah um i will say that uh there was things about this movie i really like for such a low budget movie um the scope and scale of this is a little bit more than i thought it would be um it, it is a period f- uh, piece film so we do get a nice production design and costumes um of course when 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 women are wearing the costumes they're nice um so um it's a very weird interesting kind of movie um there's a little bit of like a revenge situation going on which i thought again was also kind of kind of fascinating um if you do kind of dig these like weird euro um softcore films i mean this entire set's kind of made for you um and uh, Melody of Passion um, is set in modern times, but is um, also very by the numbers. Um, the sex isn't really that titillating. Um, but I will say this has some really weird stuff going on. And it made me kind of appreciate this film. Like, like uh, at the very beginning, there is a robbery uh with a bride and groom that are like dressed uh up to be like gangsters or something but they're in like their wedding attire and it's so bizarre um and then there's a scene that feels like it's straight out of a 70s euro horror film complete with a goblin like score um goblin was a progressive rock band it was really famous for doing suspiria um but yeah it, it's just kind of a mood piece it's really strange but i loved it um it, it it again is just very like the plot is non-existent kind of but uh it was interesting i i liked it because like i said there's enough kind of strangeness going on that kept me uh at least mildly engaged so this entire set um it's weird because it, it's just not my thing, but I think if it is your thing, it is a really nice package overall. Like Severin always does a really nice job. These are really nicely restored. All three of them looked great. So I think if you like dig these titles, uh, if this sounds thoroughly in your wheel, wheelhouse, I highly recommend it. It's just, you know, my sensibilities are a little different. So, you know, it's not something I would probably run out and revisit but yeah it's a nice collection all right um happy for (laughs) fans of that genre as i said last (laughs) week good for them um (laughs) going to my next release this is from uh liberator and mbd this is uh anything goes uh which happens to be a filmed version of the stage play uh Mm -hmm. this is filmed in london uh and so I had actually never seen the, uh, this production or even heard any of the music. Um, I knew it was based around the music of Cole Porter. Uh, uh, this appears, to, the original stage play was, uh, it debuted in 1934. Um, so this is quite old, but um, they've done several revivals and this is from uh, one of the more recent revivals. Uh, what really drew me to this is two things. Uh, one of which I've been getting kind of more into uh, like musical theater in the past probably five years or so. Um, of course, Hamilton. I love the Hamilton presentation on Disney. Uh, but then I've also like um, seen other filmed adaptations like Come From Away on Apple TV and stuff. So I, I really appreciate, especially at the time where I'm not uh, able to go see like uh, live theater right now that I that some of these companies are releasing them on Blu-ray like that's pretty amazing to me um, so I did get to like it was like I was able to experience a like Broadway quality play in the comfort of my own home it's a different experience but it's enough it's a enough approximation to get there uh, the second reason I uh, wanted to see this is for uh, Sutton Foster here who I'm a big fan of. Uh, I watched Bunheads back in the day. Um, she was on a show called Younger, but mainly she's just known for being like a terrific theater like stage actress. So um, she's very talented and this whole cast is pretty damn talented. Um, overall, as a, like a, as a filmed production, um, I it's a 
filmed really well. I think you the the direction is really great. Like it captures all of the kind of like um, moments that I think you would want to catch. Like whenever like there are big like dancing sequences and stuff. Like the camera pulls back and lets you see it. When there's more personal moments, you do get kind of the like those closer personal moments and stuff. Um, it's a really good uh, like filmed show of this um, as a show itself. I will say I'm not like the biggest fan of it. Um, it was fine. It was entertaining enough, but it, it didn't completely captivate me at like some of my favorite musicals, but I was glad I got to watch it. Um, it's like co kind of more of like a madcap screwball type uh, show where it's like all of these characters find themselves on like on a boat, like out at sea. Um, and there's kind of like some people like undercover, like with different identities and like different love like dynamics like forbidden love or like unrequited love looking for love that type of stuff so like you have some gangsters undercover as like priests then you have like uh people like searching for love that like don't feel like they like are, are like uh deserving it like they are like not at the right station or whatever like they're not like wealthy enough or all that type of stuff so there's a lot of different type of dynamics at play but overall uh the Cole Porter songs they they like they they weave really nicely into this narrative the performers are giving it their all and stuff it's just as a show itself uh it didn't completely hook me but I I was entertained enough um and I I, I I'm glad to have this on Blu-ray uh I this company has actually released some other uh stage shows on Blu-ray that I'm probably gonna have to check out and see if i can like uh see if they're running a sale or anything because i know they've done like 42nd street they've done an mm -hmm. american paris uh they've done several shows that uh i would like to check out um uh, so i'm glad that they released this is in good quality it has dts 5.1 sound looks crisp and clear no special features but like it's a filmed theater production you don't really expect too much in the way of special features um but i'm just glad to have it in high definition. So if you're a fan of the show, this is great. Um, uh, if you're kind of newer to it, maybe you'll want to like sample the soundtrack and see if it's for you. Uh, but overall, glad this is on Blu-ray. I want more theater on Blu-ray. So uh, that's my, uh, I, I want to support this just to support other releases of this type at least. Nice. Um, yeah, that sounds really interesting. I, um... I've always wanted to see like official re a recording of Avenue Q. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, so uh, yeah, my uh, my second to last film is a weird one, and um, I just based on the um pull quotes, I had to see it. Uh, and that is Flaming Ears. <laughs> So yeah, it is quite a movie. Um, I don't know. Have you ever seen the movie Liquid Sky? No, I've heard. I've heard about it though. So that kind of reminds me of this, though. I think this is even more weird and abstract. Uh, right. So, um, it's kind of funny because like my husband doesn't like like this is the like everything that my husband doesn't like about movies. Like this is it. <laughs> um it's like too artsy and i will I, I mentioned that because i will say up front that i don't think i could recommend this to casual film fans and that's not like i'm gatekeeping or anything it's just to say this has a narrative is being generous i don't really think it's more about the plot it's more just a mood it's a style it has connecting tissue that is i guess what you would call the plot but it's not like the narrative isn't very traditional the very first couple minutes of the movie uh it appears that the one uh actor is uh having sex with a, a piece of furniture <laughs> so uh it's not super explicit but you you get you get the gist of what's happening so yeah uh, I mentioned that just because it gives you kind of an idea of like what this movie is. It's more of a mood and a feeling and it's like grungy and 
Um, it's it's a post apocalyptic movie, but it's a lot. I will say the pacing's maybe not great. It's not that long to begin with, but again, when you have something that is just more mood and visuals, it's it's a visually fascinating film. But yeah, it, it's just when you have something that's a little bit more abstract like that, it's a big ask for like eight, an 80 minutes to stretch it out to 80 minutes. So at the beginning of this release, um, they do talk about how um, this was a very difficult film to restore. They talk about um, how I think like this was maybe 16, a 16 print that um, was maybe lost over time, but they were able to get like um, a different copies of it and they restored it there's like some definitely some like rough spots that you can tell but again um i think it's amazing that they were able to kind of restore this uh at all because um it can be very um time consuming um and this is a 4k restoration so like that's fantastic um and uh yeah so i think this is really interesting uh i love the um this is a a queer centric movie um i want to do something maybe during pride this month to showcase um some like uh queer centric movies i know kino has like put out a lot of really interesting films like that um but uh yeah this is just weird grungy um again if you dig stuff kind of like liquid sky or um stuff like warhol um kenneth anger stuff like that i think you would also like flaming ears awesome yeah that sounds interesting um <laughs> i will approach it approach it with caution but that <laughs> i i do get a little bit adventurous sometimes as you know uh so <laughs> i'll have to check it out and let you know what I think after that interesting first scene. So we shall see. <laughs> <laughs> um, my final film, um, I'm trying, I got this from NBD. I think this is through, uh, I can't remember the sub label this is from, but it is a documentary uh, and it is The Bug, uh, the, the life and time of the people's car. And yes, this is just a documentary about the VW bug. And it's kind of like, it's history and life and everything. Uh, it's that's all it is. <laughs> uh, so you pretty much know if this is probably going to be for you or not. Uh, what really drew me especially to this is one, I love documentaries. Two, um, this is na narrated and uh, produced by Ewan McGregor. Um, so he, he and he's throughout the movie as well, kind of sharing his own passion for this vehicle uh, and this for me i'm not sure i know not all dads are the same but this is like a dad movie through and through for me at least like uh my father-in-law i feel like he's like a huge car guy and i feel this would be like right up his alley this feels like something that like if i went and visited their house he would just have this on in the background like playing on some like car channel uh, but it is a pretty interesting documentary and it's not just a puff piece there's a little bit of that but um you do just have like a lot of like vw volkswagen bug enthusiasts kind of running down kind of like the history and their own like experiences with this vehicle so you get kind of like its origins from like uh germany and they kind of they do address like the whole like uh how was hitler involved with this car and everything and like like what did he design it was it his favorite car they kind of debunk some of those myths and kind of like put some stuff into perspective um and it kind of like kind of goes through like how it like uh, permeated like american culture um kind of like its design and how it's like evolved and uh, what what people really enjoy about the vw bug and um like i said there's just a, there is just a lot of appreciation of just them being like this is so cool this is why it's cool but then they also have some interesting things i don't want to spoil like every single interesting fact about this but there's like a darker element to like this was a very popular car in mexico for like cabbies like this is what they would use as like cabs 
Um, but there's a darker element to why they outlawed the BW bug as taxis that I, that you'll have to watch the film to figure out, or I'll tell you after this video, but I don't want to ruin it for our whole, our audience, but like just kind of some of those elements of just like, okay, this is just, this isn't strictly just like Volkswagens are great and Volkswagen culture that are worth checking out. Um, if you're not hugely into cars, this might kind of like, if you're just like like I don't want to hear anything about cars. Cars don't mean anything to me. You might struggle with this because this is just a, 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 a like a love love letter to this particular car. It is not much more than that. Um, but if you do like have even have a passing uh, interest in any kind of automotive stuff, it's a well made documentary. I think some of the interviews are, could have probably been either cut or like some of the some of the things they say. I was kind of like. I don't know about that. That kind of seems like like a little odd, like not in like a fun way, but like a little like that. I don't know about this, but overall, I won't hold it against a few odd moments here and there. I think it's a perfectly serviceable documentary. I'm not going to say it blew me away. It's not my favorite documentary I've even watched probably this week, but <laughs> I watch a lot of documentaries. Um, but it is a solid one if you're interested in learning about this history. If you're a Ewan McGregor fan, you do get to see him pretty consistently. So that that was a selling point for me. Um, as far as this presentation, it looks perfectly good, sounds good uh, in high definition. Um, it has a few uh, unused, like deleted scenes in this and like a trailer. Um, so nothing too substantial, but a few deleted scenes that just up the value a little bit. So uh, the bug uh, documentary, you probably know if it's for you just from that description. Um, if you if it is, seek it out. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, especially when they kind of touch upon like some of the more like weird or maybe myths about the car, that sounds really fascinating, um, as you were saying. Um, so my final title is one that I was so insanely excited for. Um and uh that is rebel without a cause Ooh, nice yeah um and i really love this artwork i love this whole packaging so let me just show it off right here um in the back is the same and so we do have a blu-ray and 4k so there is a digital copy that's not in there now but um if you order it yours will have that and uh yeah i've seen this movie many times um uh, it's about teenagers i actually discovered it as a teen and i thought that is kind of the perfect time to watch it but uh yeah in terms of iconic 50 cinema you don't really get any better than nicholas ray's uh, rebel without a cause um james dean is a cultural uh icon and this is kind of his defining role um and this might be one of the most famous teen angst movies of the era and perhaps of all time. Uh, sadly, this movie seems to be more famous for the fact that the entire core cast died uh, rather young and in mostly bizarre or strange circumstances. Um, so, yeah, this movie uh, is, uh, I feel like, still feels like urgent and interesting Um almost like uh i think this is like close to 70 years old um natalie wood i want to like single out because i was re-watching this the other night and just her uh scene in the beginning of the film in particular where um they're all kind like the some of the, the the central teens the three of them uh all kind of end up uh in juvenile like this juvenile kind of court situation where um they're all being kind of excess assessed uh from like what's going on with them and natalie wood has just beautiful like monologue and she just breaks down and it's like some of the most amazing acting i think she's ever done um so yeah this movie's great um i everybody's great in it um Sal Minio, I think, is kind of the real rebel. There's a really interesting, to give you a little context, um, a lot of, um, so Sal Minio was, was um, a real uh, queer actor 
and his character in Rebel is often has been seen by historians as queer coded. Um, there's there's many different like nods. Uh, so uh, I think uh, they talk about this in length in the uh, cellular closet, which you reviewed. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you recall, they, they kind of get into that a little bit. And uh, honestly, mm -hmm. like people think that James Dean is the rebel without a cause, but really Salminio's the rebel. He's the outcast. Mm -hmm. He's the one that doesn't fit in. And um, I, it always shocks me when what he's picked up for is killing puppies, <laughs> which is, yeah, I, I, it's it's wild. And I'm like, I'm supposed to like this character because I love dogs. So yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll try to get past that. But um, yeah, it, it's it's such a fascinating not only snapshot of the 50s and this sort of um, culture and um, school dynamic, but it's just it's it's a movie that you could just show anybody and it still feels relevant. It still feels like you can see parts of your life in like people that don't fit in that are looking for acceptance. Like they, they literally talk about chosen family in this before that was even uh, really in the lexicon. So uh, it's, it's, it's really fascinating. I think it's a great movie. Um, they port over um, all of the, the previous features um and i don't think that there's any new features that are exclusive to this but of course um uh, the real like treat is the 4k again i've seen this movie many times and i can confidently say this is the the best it's ever looked um it's really nice because um it's um you have that grain it hasn't been scrubbed it's not heavy but it still gives you that really nice film look um colors are uh pop really nicely i mean like you can even, like you can see like textures on like people's costumes like i i took note of like you know talking again about natalie wood in that opening scene like you can you can see like the texture on her blouse i mean it's just like that um like detailed um it's it's incredible skin tones also are really nicely balanced um just a breathtakingly good job uh i warner brothers really does an amazing job of taking care of their prestigious films their their amazing stuff that they have in their their uh, vault and um next week i'm going to be talking about two more warner brothers titles as part of their 100 uh uh celebration um yeah so yeah amazing uh i love this film it's it's one of my favorites um nicholas ray is a really interesting director that i think um we don't talk about enough but we should um he's done a lot of other really great films um yeah i that's one release i'm very excited to check out so i want to see what they did with this 4k restoration uh and just it's a classic. So yes, all the yes, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, I just think like Warner Brothers is killing it. Uh, everybody that we've talked to label wise has been killing it. I just love how we live in a world where these two 4Ks can exist side by side. Like, mm -hmm. mm, love it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is our show. Um, as always, we really appreciate any likes, comments, shares, all that really great stuff. And uh, as always, just thank you for hanging out with us.